Ja. So there's toilets there. So yeah, that might be a good idea to go to the toilet. Fire exit. Woo! Fire exits. Yep, so we can go down there. But I'm gonna use the loo first. I'll be back in a sec. Six hours later. Randomly. Nah, it's just jokey, jokey stuff, isn't it? Jokey stuff. How <laughs> come we had made it? Why has he made it jokey? I don't know. Oh, look, the rooms. Like uh, dorms. It's the commissioner. That would have been the person in charge of the whole bunker, the commissioner. So he was the top man. And he would have had his own room because of the stress of dealing with everything else. Nobody else would have probably had their own rooms. They would have all been bunked. So this is probably another person, principal officer. So, you know, these are almost like military positions, you know, in terms of after a war. You know, these people would be putting people to death, basically. They would be going outside with guns and shooting civilians that they found who were ill and just shooting them on the spot, I think, because you, could, you couldn't waste food on them or medicine, so they would just be killing people. What like the? Pr Prime Minister. This is literally the Prime Minister's room. Anyway, our Margaret Thatcher's in the bed, look, over there. So, that is Maggie in the bed. So this was the uh, Prime Minister's room, look. There's a slide projector over there, look. Really big old-fashioned slide projector. Uh, look, it's safe on the wall, probably nuclear codes and important stuff to do with launching missiles and all the rest of it. Yeah, but this was literally, as you can see up there, no joking about folks, that's the Prime Minister's room, 205. Wow. So if you want to if you want to hold back so you're not getting my voice talking over everything, unless you want to hear my voice, I won't uh, I won't take it personally. If you... <laughs> oh look, it's Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Oh, it's VHS. It's not compatible. I don't even know what Bugs Bunny is. No. No, I don't know. Jordan. Uh -huh. You know what jo Tom and Jerry is. Yeah. Yeah, mouse, isn't it? Cat and mouse. Yeah. You haven't heard of Bugs Bunny? No. Bugs Bunny is the rabbit. He's like, yep, 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 what's up, what's up, Doc? Eating carrots. <laughs> I don't know it. Bugs Bunny, oh my God. I'll have to show you some Bugs Bunny. He's really funny, man. Yeah, no entry except in an emergency. But we've got to see what's in there, though. We've got to have a quick look. The alarm will go off now. Whoop. Oh. Uh. Stairs. It's a stairs. Bunker staff only. So yeah, only in emergencies. It's all right. We we will we'll respect your uh, privacy, bunker staff. Very chunky these. Yeah. So these are the teleprinters that would have connected to War Command and headquarters. And do you think the lighting would have actually been like that, or do you think they would have had a bit brighter lighting? Do you think the lighting's a bit dull? Well, I think it's a bit dull, but if you turn turn these switches, like I was going to say, it might light up. But only one. Only one lights up, sadly. be nice if they all came on. But there we go. What have we got in these rooms then? This is actually the um, bunker staff. Only bunker staff are allowed in here. So that's, uh, yeah, equipment rooms. Yeah, look, 
police riot gear, anti-terrorist, anti-terrorist survival kit from Prime Minister David Cameron's car. You know, Gestapo officers with uh, all their riot gear on. <coughs> oh dear. So. Now show in. Now show in in theatre. Now show in. Oops. It's like from the West Country. Now show in in the theatre. You didn't actually look like. You must have got some entertainment on for people working here. Mm. You can't have spoken up and done that same bit of shit with the Yeah, maybe this was. This room was a. Uh, cinema. Yeah, you can't have spoken up and done that same bit of Yeah, maybe this was. This room was a cinema. You know? So you'll put on movies to entertain the people down here, keep them, keep them happy. Whilst they know everything's dead outside. But there is a video projector, but it's not turned on. Perhaps it's broken. So, yeah. There's an old, uh, that's one of those Geiger Muller things. You connect the sensor in there and it'll tell you, it go click, 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 and tell you how many uh, millisieverts of radiation are out there. Hmm. Pretty amazing though, isn't it? Ministry of Defence, this is their, their post. That's where they would be. for this. What's it called? It's called um what is this 360 camera called? It's called a uh, an Insta 360. Insta, yeah. Where's the bloody Insta app on this? Insta, come on. Can't bloody see it. Oh here it is, Insta 360. Why is it knackers? I'm just trying to see if it'll tell me if the camera's working because I can't see any LEDs flashing on it. This is Judiciary and Police. Surveyor. Turn this on. These, um, these things here are to open and close the fans automatically. Can you see them? Right, that's where we saw back earlier on. You could switch the switches. But these would open and close the, um, the, the fan vents to let air into some rooms and not others. So you could switch them on and off. And in a, in a fire, they might all go ch -ch -ch and close. There was a fire in here. So, yeah. Minister for Social Security. I don't think you'd be needing much Social Security after a bloody, you know, what people are going to be claiming their uh, their benefits, are they, after a nuclear war? I don't think so.
and it says like cipher S cipher so this might be a um, an encrypted terminal yeah emergency homeless officer but yeah some of these would have been encrypted terminals so people couldn't work out what you were talking about I so say you can't go in so let's just go to the next section Telephones. Well, you can you can go down to a certain degree. There's telephone equipment. A heater, burn things to keep warm. Look. PDX calling Air Commodore Hamley. Oh look, it's a Commodore computer. Commodore 8296. Was that, a, that wasn't a pet, was it? I don't even remember seeing one of those. Commodore. But like, what Commodore? I don't remember those. This is what people would be living like. <laughs> I feel like after Victorian times. Like they suddenly go back suddenly everyone who had trendy clothing, you know, and like Nike shoes and all that, they suddenly go like after nuclear war they go doomf and they suddenly go back to wearing um like, you know, turn of the century clothing. And they've they're like got old teapots and old sinks, you know, suddenly like everything just goes back in time. It's pretty cool, isn't it? After a nuclear bomb, it, you never you never realise it would sort of like send you through time travel as well. This is more like wartime, uh World War Two sort of era stuff really, this is. Yeah. So, you know, at best you could say like probably latest would be like 40, 1940s, 50s, because I think the bomb was invented like 1947. So therefore, a lot of the relevance of this would have been around that time, needing this bunker in a nuclear capacity. You know, GPO, General Post Office, coal, electricity genera generating, army, Royal Navy, Air Force. <laughs> That's it, like, you know. So in, in the government bunker where the, where the Prime Minister would be like, one, one seat for the army, one for the Royal Navy, one for the Air Force. <laughs> God alive. What's this about then? Please what pace please place one pound donation if you have dressed up. Oh right, I see. You dress up using these clothes and then you sit in there and have your photo taken. So you can get dressed up in all this stuff. But I don't like the idea of having somebody else's crap on me really, so <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But you can if you wish. You can dress up. Here we are, folks. I'll leave that for someone else to try. Someone's got the space bar. Somebody smacked in the space bar. Yeah. Oh dear. 
Disgraceful. Well, it's so old and dated, but surely it gets in a place of them eventually, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at this. Real to real computer tape recording. Computer tape. That's all like part of the same thing, look. Oh yeah, Christ. Oh, that's I a even that's a mini computer. Yeah, the whole thing it's sat on is the computer, like a Bull DPS 6000. So the whole of this is a computer. I thought it was just a table for it. Yeah, You're right. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a mini computer, isn't it? It's what they call a mini computer. Yeah, but it ain't mini. Some but in see. back in the day, that would have been considered a mini computer in the days of um, mainframes, yeah, and that would have been a mini computer. And then we went from mini computers to personal computers, which were obviously a lot smaller than that. Yeah, that's right, they're on, on screen, they're talking about shooting people there. So these... And they would be out there with guns killing the public so they could get all the supplies that the public had. Because it would be important for rich, powerful people and controllers to have stuff and you would have to give up what you had or die if you didn't like the idea of giving up what you had. And if you were, if you were, if you could be used for slave labour, they would keep you alive. But if you were ill, they would kill you. So, yeah, we're going to go upstairs now after that depressing thought. If anybody wants to watch anything on that, um, watch uh, the war plan, or the war game, sorry, it's called War Game. It's a black and white BBC um, dramatisation, but it was based on the war plans. So uh, it talks about the fact that they would, would actually execute people after a war. And I think it was, it was banned by the BBC because it was considered too shocking, because it was actually true. And they thought the British public couldn't take it. It was too shocking. So it was uh, shelved for many years and then it was re-released, I think, in the 90s. But yes, yeah, available now for people to watch. But it's amazing to think the BBC actually filmed something that they weren't allowed to show because it was too honest. <laughs> it was actually telling people what was going to happen. They were going to shoot people after a nuclear war. They were just going to go out and shoot people. Yeah, but you can't deny this to me, you know. No, you can't deny it, but the BBC weren't able to, to show it for many years because it was considered too... It's, it's very shocking, actually, I've got to be honest. I mean, considering it's a dramatisation, it's incredibly shocking for its time. I mean, it was made, I think, in, like, the 60s. Yeah, but what if you actually just, like, shooting them to get the supplies? They weren't shooting them because they were at well, risk of contaminating the rest of the... They, um, population. They didn't want people to get together in groups and gangs and, uh, and start taking over. So basically people would have to either be told what to do and work in slave gangs for the government and be told what to do. Uh, but if there were too many people and they were getting rowdy, they would just shoot people. And if you were ill, they would just take a look at you and you'd have these guys like would go out from, the, uh, from these bunkers with weapons and they would go around and then they would look at people and they go, oh, well, she's got a cut. Oh, she seems to be, she's vomiting. She's got radiation sickness. And they would just, like, turn you around, bang, back of the head. Oh, no, we can't be doing that. Yeah, you didn't know this. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to upset him when I show him this. He's going to be very upset, mate. You'll be very upset. Yeah, this is the reality of... Uh, even if I'm upset about it then, but they exist too, so I think it should still be shown on... I think it's just still being shown on the telly and not shown. Yeah. Shown. Look, see, whilst, whilst everybody else is dying, they would have hospital rooms for the Prime Minister and the people in charge, because it would be important to keep them alive. But the public, no, nah, they're, just, they're just, you know, disposable. The public would be disposable after a nuclear war. Mm. And if they weren't controllable, they would be disposed of. Yeah. Very sad. Very sad. They won't be able to get away with doing something like that nowadays. So. You probably find that the rules are still in place. 
exactly the same rules are still in place. Yeah. Do you think that that's they use them nowadays? Oh yeah, if there was a nuclear war, the same rules would still apply. They'd pull all those rules out of um, out of the filing cabinet and they'd start uh, they'd no, start no. using them. <laughs> they'll go onto the streets and shoot people <laughs> you nowadays don't. if I'm <laughs> Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do that to the public. Because <laughs> the, the public, if the public turn against the, the old now the old you, government... There you go, you that's know. why. Now you're, now you're getting into it, see? This is the thing. There'd be limited supplies, and the government would be in bunkers, and the army would be controlling their supplies, right? And what they wouldn't want is loads of the public getting together and trying to take the supplies off the army, take the supplies off the government, open the bunkers and get in there, right? So what would they do? They'd go out, and when they'd see groups of people acting <laughs> rowdy, they'd kill them. They'd kill them. Yeah, but now you think they'd do that in modern day if we were in that situation again? The rules probably haven't changed because they would have been made by military planners based on, based on you know, the way they think the public were going to act. And you've seen, you've, what, what have people done recently with the, with the petrol? It only takes one little thing, like, you know, oh, there's a few garages, might be a bit short, people are panic buying. And then everyone buys it all. But we're yeah. all right because we've got diesels and no one's... Panic buying diesel. Well, they are, because it's the same as petrol, you know, it's, it's the same thing. But this is what people do, they panic. And what the government's idea is, well, if people are panicking and they're going to get rowdy and they're going to get violent and they're going to try and take control themselves, you shoot them. If people aren't going to play by your ball and they aren't going to do what you say and they aren't going to work as a slave for you, if they won't agree to do those things, they're no use. Shoot them. You know, you'd have to keep a long way away from the army and the military and any of these stations, any of these places, because if they came out and caught you, they'd assume that you were trying to break in and trying to steal stuff, so they'd probably just shoot you. You know, there would be prison camps where they would keep slaves, and the prison camps would be just so that they could kind of get people to do work for them. And if you didn't agree to be a slave in one of those prison camps, they're not going to debate it with you. They're not going to ask you whether you yeah, want to go in front of a judge. In modern day, they would. No, they wouldn't. No, 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 no. no. In slave camps in modern day. Oh. Well, this that is, is emerging. Like it's such a, de not, we're in a de democracy in no. like a free country. Democracy is suspended in an emergency like that. Democracy is suspended and it becomes a thing called martial law, which means if you are in the army and you don't do what you're told, they shoot you in the head. That's even in the army. They go, we haven't got time to deal with you, mate, and we're not going to give you food because we're feeding you and you're a waste of time. Bang. So take you out. And they do that with the public as well. They just don't want to waste the food and the resources and the medicine. Oh, that's a, that's that's a, that's a crap, crap video projector. <laughs> it looks like some Chinese thing. Look how, look how pixelated it is. <laughs> Probably looks all right through the video camera, but it is very pixelated. But yeah, I mean, it costs a fortune, isn't it, for all this stuff in this bunker? Yeah. The thing is, th these video projectors have been here for a very long time. When those would probably cost a load of money, now you can buy that sort of stuff really cheaply. Yeah. But it's nice they've they've made the effort to do it though because I don't remember there being video projectors here last time I was here 20 years ago so obviously they're trying to do what they can with the budgets they've got it's nice that they've done it though really here's all the uh, here's all the stuff they would have been using and it would have been pretty barbaric going back to surgery that's actually really crazy Did that noise <laughs> yeah considering that the bag just yeah we've, we've been through this way I didn't notice that noise at first no I, I did some of them probably start after a while We come past here. Typical washroom, yeah, toilets. That's not a toilet. 
what the plastic um, that looks like a, a those really cheap um, camping things you get where it's just a bucket with like a toilet seat that clips on the top of it yeah look there's a fire exit yeah hello <laughs> I just want to see what the fire exit looks like I'm not going to go down it oh look it's like loads of stuff private so you know the thing is I always want to see those bits I want to see all the bits that you yeah, I want to get you're not meant to, you're see. meant to see well. yeah so this is where everybody would be billeted in these um, these areas attention attention would head typist please report to the telephone exchange what sort of name is that typist please typist. report to the telephone yes. exchange yeah typist to type type letters Oh, I thought you were saying someone's name. No, no. I mean, all government departments would have typist pools. A lot of people use word processors themselves on their desks today, but back in the day, you'd write letters on paper and you'd send it to the typist and they would send it back to you typed. I've done that when I worked in the civil service. I sent letters off to the typist pool. And you get, um, them, you get them back and you've got to check them to make sure there's no spelling mistakes and you have to send it back and they'll do it again. No entry. Keep out. Oh my god. Why do they want you to stay out of here? It's really cool. Female dormitory. Why do they want you to stay out here? We're not going to go in proper, but I would like to just film it. Let's get a quick glance. Ooh, look, they've got fake windows there, fake curtains to make you think that you're in a... To make you think you're in a... Um... So sorry, Mr. Parrish. <laughs> we had to have a little peek. We had to have a little peek. We couldn't resist. If you don't want us to have a look, you should lock the door, sir. <laughs> <laughs> like all the different people who've come down. Photographs of people who've come here in the past. There we are. That's the owner, Mr. Parrish. Mike Parrish, Mike Parrish, Mike Parrish. Yeah. You've got a lot of effort into making it. No, he's done a good job, but I mean, he, I met him briefly. When I was coming out of this place, oh look, there was Richard Awadi, Awadi there. He's like he's with him. That's pretty mad. But he has made a lot of effort, and as I say, this, this place has been here for 20 years that I know of. So he's been running it for a very long time, and uh, it's got to take a lot of effort to do it. Exit to car park. Please do not go out of this door before you've paid and handed back in your tape player. Right. So is, what's this then? Oh, this is the canteen, is it? Oh. There's got to be somebody working here. Maybe it's a student car, not a canteen. Where? Oh, there is a person working here. <laughs> Just want to check that it's still recording. Here we go, folks. This is all the stuff they got here. Camo hat. Camo leaf hat. That's pretty good actually. Jack Pike of England. So how can I tell if that's bloody working now? The cafe area, look. Hello. Oh yeah. No, I didn't pay the. the it's a bit if you want, but yeah, it should be good. Whoa. So there we go. Whoa. Thank you. Is this the way out? No entry, staff only. No. My house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hiya. Hi there. Have you paid? Yes, we have. In a slightly different way. So this is the the That's way. The that was the emergency saw. exit that Maybe. we were looking at. It's good, really. They've got disabled access here. Yeah. Ah. 
So this is an emergency escape door then. It comes out of a different bit. I don't think we came out of this way when I was here last time. You had to come out of the main entrance. So this has been opened back up then. Yeah, we'll probably all come out of that pit as the two pies there. Yeah. I don't remember seeing this last time I was here. So yeah, it has changed because they didn't have a canteen and they didn't um, they didn't have this doorway, I don't believe, unless I'm mistaken. But, wow, you wouldn't even know that was there. It's That's amazing, isn't it? Thing, isn't it? That's amazing. You wouldn't really know that was there. Look at it. Amazing. Wow. Wow, that is nuts. The whole thing about this being very stealthy is it, it is, it is crazy what you're looking at. You've just visited the third World War bomb shelter. This is the second World War bomb shelter. <laughs> Came with a price tag of seven pounds, which would be 390 pounds in today's money. And it what, was you'd sit in that? Yeah, but people used to people used to build these out their back gardens. They used to dig a hole in the ground and then they put one of these in there and then they'd have steps down, steps down into their garden, into these things. Anderson shelters, yeah. Yeah, but what do you even do? That, that's, I won't trust that with a bomb. Well, no. You, no, the thing is, you're hoping you don't get a direct hit. If you've got a direct hit on top of you, you're going to die. But the whole thing is, because you're under the ground, if your, your house over here gets hit by a bomb, fragments will just fly over the top. It's not designed for direct hits. Because you'd only be like about five foot... You know, you mm. dig a five foot hole out your back garden. I mean, it wasn't like those um, uh, air raid shelters that you get with the uh, the ones we've been in, where you go, go down steps. Those are professionally made. These are just in people's back gardens. So these were like made by amateurs? Yeah. DIYers? Well, sort of, yeah. A lot of people had them out their back garden. I've been in people's um, air raid shelters out their back gardens. There's a lot of them out there. Yeah, but are they, are they like just just like that? They're not like massive ones. Like no, big bunkers. just enough for you, you and your kids. And you go out there when the air raid sirens go off. You go out there, and when you hear that the the, the siren for all clear, um, and you hear that the bombs are stopped blasting, then you go back indoors. You'd only be out there for like half an hour or an hour. Why not just build like a big military bunk style bunker under your house? That'd be like. Mm. Could you imagine? Yeah, so now come and visit Norpar Flowers and Country Gift Shop, set in a farmyard. Hmm, I'm not much into me flowers. Which way is the main way back then? That's the car park is behind us. It's quite a few cars here, isn't it? Yeah, it's because they're for sale. What? Is it for sale? Yeah, look, they've all got, all of them's got like stickers on saying for sale. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, 3,500. Bloody hell, it's had a bit of a beating though. I don't know if I'd pay <laughs> 3,500 for that. <laughs> but fair play. This one's got all sorts of weird, weird and wonderful lights stuck on the back of it, which I don't think are exactly legal, but... Look, it doesn't even latch shut properly anymore. <laughs> 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 these these are the legal lights, you've got to have these ones on the back of the vehicle, but for some reason they've also got ones up there on the top of the vehicle. And then they've just got like a normal bed lock, holding the boot shut. Oh, or a padlock? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Does it, does it boot MOT like that? Would it, <laughs> well, it might be not for use on the road, it might be for just use up here perhaps. You can use it off-road anywhere you like then. I think we've got to go this way for the car park. So what's down there then? That's the entrance to something. That's the entrance. And this is to the car park. That makes me laugh, does that? So do you want to go past the main way again? Or we've seen the front, haven't we? Yeah. I think we've seen enough there. Yeah, that's the, that's the way that you would have gone down to the bunker. It would have all been in trees like this. So you, unless you knew it was here, you probably wouldn't have come down here. There'd have been enough fences and things to keep you away. Palisade, probably, and well, various... Well, if you knew it, what it is, it'd be, it'd be like, a, in itself, it'd be a bit of a, um, a bit of a nightmare trying to find the way in, because it'd have all been well camouflaged. It wouldn't have been... 
Yeah. Obvious. Yep. You know, you don't, you, your drones didn't exist then, so you won't be able to fly a drone over and go, oh, there's an house there. It'd be. Yeah. You'd, you'd have to walk it. You'd have to, like, walk, get into the site. And then yeah. you'd have to walk through the site and hope that you didn't get caught walking through, otherwise, I'd shoot you. Because <laughs> I'd be that paranoid. Yeah. Wouldn't there? Oh, look, there's small sign perhaps of uh, that might be an emergency escape because that know, just out in the know. middle of nowhere is a bit of a weird one isn't it oh it could be the sewage pipe the pressure could go and that manhole just with the pressure flies up yeah. and then lots of shit comes flying out <laughs> of it you yeah. know god knows it's all lights there Lights, but now in addition to the nuclear bunker, they've got this uh, uh, play area which includes zip wires, zip wires, and uh, rope trees and jungle stuff. So, they'll need the money to keep maintain that bunker, so yeah. they'll be adding more attractions to make it more of like a family day out. So, people, the families come and they donate, yeah, and yeah. Then they can keep the bunker running. That's and right. like 20 years ago, it didn't have a cafe, but through donations and stuff, now they've managed to expand it and get a cafe. And yeah, you know, <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know if it's worth poking my head around the corner of uh to see these ropes and stuff they've got here but it looks pretty impressive but I can't film I'm not allowed to film uh, kiddies because YouTube don't allow that so I have to keep keep people's faces out of it but let's have a look, quick look let's have a quick look there you go look look at all this wow look at all that look, you can walk walk across the tops of these things through the through the trees and uh, You've probably got a hook thing what we do what we're planning on rolling out to find where the location of drone pilots is yeah but these guys won't have access to that so yeah so it's good night from b face night good uh, <laughs> good good, good uh, sorry we'll try that again it's good day. yeah what am i saying good night yeah it's, it's a good day it's a good afternoon sorry yeah. it's a good afternoon from mr b face good afternoon <laughs> We've enjoyed ourselves in the bunker. You should come along and have a look. It is in pristine, perfect condition. There you go. What he said. It's in very good condition. <laughs> and it's, for, it's value for money. Value for money. So check it out, folks. Come down here and have a look for yourself. There's no substitute to actually seeing it in person. So I would re well recommend it. And they're very friendly down here. So uh, come and check it out. Um... <laughs> right, that's it, so stop recording.